Before we get into economics proper, it's important to review some basic stuff that you ought to already know. This video is going to review the following concepts. Graphs, positive and negative relationships, slope, correlation versus causation, percents and percent changes. This stuff is probably boring to many of you, but it's still worth reviewing. Graphs are visual depictions of information. Technically, the graphs we'll use in this class are line graphs, but we'll just call them graphs. Graphs have two axes, sometimes called x and y, or horizontal and vertical. In this class, you'll see q and p quite often. The axes depict amounts of something. Moving to the right along the horizontal axis means more of the stuff on that axis, and moving upward on the vertical axis means more of the stuff on that axis. For example, consider a graph of ice cream sales and air conditioner repair services. Suppose that both ice cream sales and purchases of air conditioner repair services go up. See, we move to a new point with more ice cream sales and more air conditioner repair services purchased. What if ice cream sales went up but air conditioner repair purchases were unchanged? It would look like this. Suppose we got a lot of data on sales of ice cream and air conditioner repair services at different times, and we put the points on the graph and connected them with a line. It might look like this. Okay, in the real world it wouldn't be this neat, but let's keep things simple. Notice how the line slopes upward? This means that when ice cream sales go up, air conditioner repair services are also purchased in greater amounts. This is called a positive relationship. When two things tend to go up together, or down together, that's a positive relationship. We also say that the line slopes upward. I guess we say this because we read from left to right, and going from left to right, it looks like it's going up. Hmm, if we all read Hebrew, would we say that it slopes downward? Anyway, it's also possible to have negative relationships, also called inverse relationships. For example, if I were to plot the relationship between the number of students that I assign the grade of F, and my teaching evaluations, I would probably get something like this. The more Fs I hand out, the lower my evaluations. We say that the line slopes downward. We can be a bit more formal about this. That is, we can mathematically describe how positive or negative these relationships are. The measure of how steep these lines are and whether they point up or down is called slope. I hope you've heard of slope. I hope you've calculated it many times in the past. If you haven't, Shame on you or your teachers. We haven't the time to go into detail now, but just to remind you, slope is rise over run, or the change in y over the change in x. That little triangle shape is called delta, and it means change in. So for example, if y goes up a lot when x goes up a little, you get a big positive slope number, which means a line that rises very steeply. If y goes down a little when x goes up a lot, you get a small negative number, which means a line that falls, but only very slowly. Suppose then that every time there are five more sales of ice cream, there is another air conditioner repair sold. The slope would be one divided by five, or one-fifth. That means a somewhat flat, upward-sloping line. You may also recall that old classic, the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, and b is called the y-intercept. Let's think some more about this example of ice cream and air conditioner repairs. Do sales of ice cream really cause air conditioner repairs? Of course not. Why would we nonetheless expect them both to rise at the same time? Take a moment to think about it. Okay, that's long enough. Ice cream sales and air conditioner repair services rise at the same time because they both happen more often in the summer. Summer is when people like eating ice cream, and summer is when people realize that their air conditioners don't work as well as they should, so they get them repaired. What's the point? The point is that correlation does not imply causation. To put it another way, just because one event happened close in time to another event doesn't mean it caused that other event to happen. Here's another example. Suppose I look at the number of times ambulances drive through my neighborhood. And compare that to the amount that people in my neighborhood spend on health care. We will likely find that when ambulances drive through, health care expenditures go up. 
Should we conclude that ambulances are making people sick, causing them to spend more on health care? No, the ambulances and health care expenditures are both caused by a third factor, illness. We should try to avoid concluding that just because two things happen close together in time, one causes the other. Most of us deal with percentages regularly. For example, you might hear that the price of gas went up by 10%, or your coach might make one of those stupid speeches exhorting you to give 110% effort. A percentage is a scale-free measure. 100% of something means all of it. I am 100% of my own height. Your height might be 120% of my height, meaning that you are 20% taller than me. A percentage change is a measure of how something has changed. For example, suppose that my daughter weighs 100 pounds. As she grows up, her weight might go to, say, 120 pounds. 120 pounds is a 20% increase from 100 pounds. How did I calculate that? A percent change is new minus old divided by old. So, for example, if I weigh 165 pounds and I lose 10 pounds, the percentage change in my weight is 155 minus 165 divided by 165, or about negative 6%. My weight fell by about 6%. The negative sign indicates a decrease. If any of these topics are difficult for you, you should do some searching around the web and read some more. I can provide some helpful links with more information as well.